controversial and never-before-seen videotapes recorded by Princess Diana's voice coach are to be used in a new documentary about the former royal. The tapes were recorded by speech expert Peter Settielen and have never been broadcast on British television. Some of the footage in the new film, to be shown on Channel 4, shows Diana speak candidly and informally about her upbringing. She reveals how Prince Charles leapt upon her to kiss her at the start of their relationship and how she ran to the Queen after she became convinced he had resumed his romance with Camilla Parker Bowles. The announcement that the videotapes are to be aired in the UK comes as ITV prepares to screen its own Diana documentary on Monday evening. This features the Duke of Cambridge and Prince Harry opening up about their loss, including their remorse at their final, brief phone call with their mother. Diana hired Mr. Settelin between 1992 and 1993 to help with her public speaking voice, following her collaboration with author Andrew Morton on a biography, and ahead of her bombshell panorama interview in 1995. The footage, captured at her private residence in Kensington Palace, shows Diana rehearsing her speaking voice and reflecting at length about her life. They have been broadcast only once and were used by American television network NBC back in 2004. Such was the controversy caused by their screening that the tapes were not sold to other broadcasters. But, three years later, the BBC spent more than £30,000 buying an option to broadcast three minutes of the tapes for the program. The documentary was later axed, with the BBC claiming it did not add to Diana's story despite having spent hundreds of thousands on its production. But Ralph Lee, Channel 4's head of Factual, has now commissioned Kaboom Film and TV to produce Diana, in her own words with award-winning director Kevin Sim. Mr. Lee said the documentary was an important contribution to the historical record. He said, the tapes, which show a relaxed and off-duty Diana, are hugely illuminating about her personality, humor and charm. Combined with historical context and interviews with her closest confidants, this film provides a nuanced, multi-layered portrait of the most famous woman in the world and a mother who has shaped the future line of the royal family. This film gives Diana a voice and places it front and center at a time when the nation will be reflecting on her life and death. It is her account of events both private and public and is an important contribution to the historical record. Others who feature in the film include the princess's long-term friend of more than 30 years drive James Colthurst and her ballet teacher Anne Allen, who are speaking on the record for the first time. The tapes were returned to Mr. Satyalan in 2004 after a lengthy dispute with Diana's family, headed by Earl Spencer, who said the footage belonged to them. A batch of some 20 videos had been held by Scotland Yard after being seized in a January 2001 raid on ex-royal butler Paul Burrell's home. The content of the tapes was regarded as so sensitive that the prosecution agreed not to use them in Mr. Burrell's Old Bailey trial which collapsed in 2002. The tapes were later sold to American broadcaster NBC for an undisclosed sum and excerpts were broadcast in 2004. Talking about running to the Queen to talk about Charles, she said, I went to the top lady and I'm sobbing. And I said, what do I do? The Queen, said, I don't know, Charles is hopeless. Other admissions from the princess included how she was deeply in love with a royal protection officer, presumed to be Barry Manicky. The bodyguard was killed in a motorbike accident and Diana revealed she believed he was bumped off because of their affair. In 2004, the screening was met with criticism amid calls for the tapes not to be shown for at least 100 years. Sir Teddy Taylor, then Tory MP for Rochford and South End East, appealed to broadcasters' sense of decency not to air the tapes while Diana's sons were still alive. The Channel 4 film will be shown in early August, the same month as the 20th anniversary of Diana's death in a car crash in Paris on August 31, 1997.